In this module, we analyze how the number of configurations of the overall world comprising the system and the multi-part bath changes when we move energy from the system to the bath. Remember the big picture. We want to know how much time the world spends in various configurations, with energy distributed in different proportions between the system and bath, because this allows us to know the typical amount of energy in the system, and thus the system's typical states and physical properties. We begin our example by listing the ways that the world can be configured with the system at energy 3 squiggly E0 and with each of the end parts of the bath at energy 2 squiggly E0. For simplicity, the parts of the bath are the same, not necessarily always having the same state, but having the same spectrum of states. Consider an alternative situation. In this case, the system no longer has energy 3 squiggly E0. One unit of energy, squiggly E0, is to be transferred to the bath. The system is in a state with energy 2 squiggly E0. As an example, we can stuff the orphaned unit of energy into part 1. The number of ways to find part 1 with energy 2 squiggly E0 is replaced by the number of ways to find part 1 with energy 3 squiggly E0. In this particular example, these numbers are the same because we have illustrated two ways to arrange part 1 with energy 2 squiggly E0 and two ways to arrange part 1 with energy 3 squiggly E0. However, these w's need not be the same and we will keep track of them as separate variables. Dividing and multiplying by the same factor w sub 1 at 2 squiggly E0 does nothing. Part 1 is only one example of a destination to which we can add energy. We can remove a unit of energy from part 1 and stuff it in any one of the various other parts of the bath. For example, we could put it into part 2, or into part 3, or part 4, and so forth, or we could stuff it into the last so-called nth part. The number of world configurations with energy 2 squiggly E0 in the system energy 3 squiggly E0 in part 1, and energy 2 squiggly E0 for all remaining parts of the bath, is equal to the number of world configurations with energy 2 squiggly E0 in the system, energy 3 squiggly E0 in part 2, and energy 2 squiggly E0 for all remaining parts. We get the same number of configurations regardless of which single part of the bath we designate as having energy 3 squiggly E0. We add up all these ways to obtain the total number of ways we can find the world configured with system energy 2 squiggly E0 with any, uh, we don't care which single one part of the bath at energy 3 squiggly E0 and with all remaining parts at energy 2 squiggly E0. That's n copies of the same number. Move the leading factor of n to collect the green text. Concisely regard all those yellow w's as the number of ways to arrange parts 1 through n holding each part at energy 2 squiggly E0. This number of ways to find the world configured corresponds to this sum over direct products. In addition to the product written out explicitly, we must also add all the possibilities referred to by writing down direct products with green highlighting applied to part 2 of the bath, part 3, and so forth all the way up to part n. What would happen to the number of configurations in which we could find the world if we transferred yet another unit of energy out of the system and into, let's say, part n, or into part n minus 1, into an intermediate part, or into this, uh, let's say, this other intermediate part? We are dumping a unit of energy into parts of the bath that started out with two squiggly E0 units of energy. This is physically the same as the procedure we studied when we previously dropped the system's energy from 3 squiggly E0 to 2 squiggly E0. Let's try putting the extra unit of energy into part 1. Uh-oh. Part 1 already has 3 units of energy, not 2. Dunking the basketball of energy into part 1 is not like dunking the basketball of energy into a part with energy 2 squiggly E0. How will we describe stuffing a unit of energy into a part that has already received a unit of energy previously? We will use judicious negligence. The bath is very big. That's what people usually mean by bath. It has a lot of parts. The green brackets correspond to only one part of a large collection of otherwise gray brackets. 
Almost all the brackets formatting the list of the states of the parts of the bath are gray, and as an approximation we pretend that all of the brackets describing the bath are gray. Decreasing the system's energy from two squiggly E0 to squiggly E0 and transferring a unit of energy to a bath described with the gray brackets, as far as the bath is concerned, this procedure increases the number of ways we can find the bath by the same factor as when we previously decreased the system's energy from three squiggly E0 to two squiggly E0. Throwing a unit of energy from the system into the bath a second time after a first transfer has already introduced some green to the bath is roughly described by the same multiplicative factor that initially modified the number of ways in which we could find the bath. Whether transferring a unit of energy to the bath the first time or instead the second time, we are figuring out the multiplicative factor that modifies the number of ways to find the bath by answering two questions. Question 1. In how many places can the transferred unit of energy be placed in the bath? Whether transferring energy the first or second time, the answer is n. There are n parts in the bath where the unit of energy can be deposited. Question 2. Say we have chosen a particular part of the bath to receive the transfer of energy from the system. How much does this energy transfer change the number of states in which we can find this particular part of the bath? For the situation of the first transfer of energy, all the parts of the bath start out with energy 2 squiggly E0. For the situation of the second energy transfer, all except one of the parts of the bath also start out with energy 2 squiggly E0. Because the bath is large, most of the ways that we can transfer a unit of energy to the bath a second time look just like the ways we could transfer the first energy unit. We are talking about transferring a unit of energy to a part of the bath initially having energy 2 squiggly E0. There is the possibility that the second energy transfer could land on the single part of the bath having elevated energy 3 squiggly E0. But most of the bath still looks like a collection of parts each at energy only 2 squiggly E0, so we make an approximation by saying that wherever the second energy transfer lands, it is added to a part of the bath starting out with energy 2 squiggly E0. Consequently, the change in the number of ways to find the particular part of the bath in which the energy transfer lands is the same change whether we are discussing the first transfer of energy or the second. The answers to questions 1 and 2 are the same for the initial and then the subsequent transfer of energy. This means that the first energy transfer and second energy transfer are each described by multiplying the number of ways to find the bath by the same green factor. The considerations we have animated for the first direct product in the sum apply to the other products that are schematically indicated at the bottom of the screen. Upon transferring energy from system to bath, the list of configurations implied by one direct product explodes in the same basic way as the list of configurations implied by any of the other direct products summed together. For each transfer of a unit of energy, the number of configurations of the world is modified by the same green multiplicative factor. For a simplified bath in which part 1 is the same kind of physical system as part 2, as part 3, and so forth, we replace W sub 1 with W sub part. The symbol U0 or U sub 0 refers to the total energy of the world, and W bath U0 means the number of ways to arrange the bath in the reference situation where all of the world's energy is allocated to the bath, with none allocated to the system. We are slightly generalizing from the specific example of a bath in which each part is held at energy 2 squiggly E0 to the situation of a bath that is specified to have all of the world's energy. The symbol delta squiggly E refers to the unit in which we are imagining that energy is transferred. The symbol squiggly E is the energy of the system. When the energy of the system decreases, the green exponent, and don't forget the negative sign, increases. When the energy of the system decreases, energy becomes available to the bath, which increases the number of ways in which the bath can be arranged. The number of ways we can find the world, given parenthetically that the system's energy is squiggly E, is the number of ways we can find the system with energy squiggly E, 
multiplied against the number of ways we can find the bath. This is a reference number W bath for the situation in which no energy is allocated to the system, multiplied against a factor that reduces the number of ways to find the bath, because some energy has been transferred from the bath to the system. The green mess highlighted by the red rectangle is an exponential function decaying as system energy squiggly E increases. It is usually expressed in this more familiar format. This is called the Boltzmann factor. The lowercase e is the base of the exponential function we have previously described. The parameter tau is called the temperature, and it is adjusted so that the green expressions in the second and third line are equal. Earlier in the video module, we mentally anchored ourselves on an initial condition in which the system had some energy, and then we considered how the number of states in which we could find the bath would increase when we transferred energy from the system to the bath. In the bottom two equations on this page, we are using as our mental anchor the situation in which the world's energy is allocated to the bath and considering transfers of energy from the bath to the system. This is the perspective sometimes encountered in textbooks. The words may at first sound slightly different, but the idea is basically the same. All else equal, the number of configurations in which we find a very large bath decreases exponentially with the energy transferred out of it to a connected system. The Boltzmann factor is the first of a small collection of expressions often used to calculate the properties of a system, which we will explore in the next video module.